The platform is powered. All right, ladies by and gentlemen, uh, you're welcome back to the plenary session of the platform, October 2017. Uh, speaking next at the platform, and no stranger to the platform, is none other than Shagun Adeni. Shagun Adeni is the chairman of the editorial board of these day newspapers. Shagun is a prolific writer, journalist, and former special advisor on media and publicity to the late president, Umar Musayar Adwa, the fellow of the Weatherhead Center for International Affairs, at Harvard University, and a senior fellow of the Nigerian Leadership Initiative, and a founding member of the National Stakeholder Working Group of the Nigerian Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, the NAITI. Uh, Shagun Adeni is a renowned best-selling author. His latest book, Against the Run of Play, has so far enjoyed tremendous reviews in the media since its release. Speaking on the subject of a nation on the edge, which way Nigeria, join me in giving to Shagun Adeni a platform welcome. Let me begin by recognizing Dr. Patitomi, a man who is a role model for many of us. Let me also recognize my friend and brother, Dr. Dakuku Pitasaid. And then let's give a round of applause for Roman for that thought-provoking presentation. You know, I noticed something when Roman was doing the presentation. As he was really had the statistics, many people were there. But the moment he talked about marriage, the women just started. They were very excited. I'm talking about Barry. I attended one last Saturday of my cousin who bears the same name with me, Odisha Gardini and his wife Ajara in Abuja. And the pastor gave a story. He said he attended a wedding. And when he came to the time of joining together the bride and the groom, and then the officiating minister said, if there is anybody here who has a reason why this couple should not be joined, he should speak up now or forever hold this peace. And then one man from the back stood up and he was coming to the altar. When he nearly reached the altar, the bride fainted. And the man got to the front and he was squeezing himself in the front row. So the minister asked him, now that you are here, what do you have to say? He said he had nothing to say. That because he's a short man, he had been attending weddings and he never really saw what was going on. And he decided that, that day he was going to Come to the front to see. <laughs> of course, you know I must thank. No, it's not Pastor Kmoju. It's Mrs. So, um, um, my day because I want to come next year. And you know, if I don't thank her, she's walking behind the scenes. If I don't thank her, you know I won't be here next year. Let me begin by sharing this story of a teacher who got lost in a rural area. And please don't ask me in which country because I don't know. <laughs> While still wandering, the teacher saw a farm and went there, hoping he would find someone from whom he could seek direction. Fortunately, he found a farmer. But as they were exchanging pleasantries, he noticed a cow with a wooden leg and he became curious. How did that cow get a wooden leg? The teacher asked the farmer. Well, replied the farmer, that is a very special cow. One night, not too long ago, we had a fire in the barn. That cow set up a gray loin that woke everyone. And by the time we got there, it had added out of the barn, not only the other cows, but indeed all the animals in the farm and saved every one of them. And that was when the cow hurt his leg as the amazed teacher. Oh no, responded the farmer. The cow was fine after that. Even though a few days later, I was in the woods when a bear attacked me. 
as it will happen. That cow was nearby and it came running to chase off the bear. That is one experience I will never forget because that cow saved my life for sure. So the bear injured the leg of the cow as the teacher. Oh no, came the prompt reply from the farmer. The cow came away from that encounter without a scratch. Unfortunately, a week after that incident, my son was walking on the farm when the tractor turned over into a ditch with a large pool of water and he was knocked unconscious. Well, that cow dove into the ditch and pulled my son out before he could drown. Nodding his head, the teacher said, now I get it. That was how the cow hurt his leg while rescuing your son. Oh no, the farmer interjected. By this time, the teacher had been patient. So how exactly did the cow get the wooden leg, he asked. Well, looking in the direction of the cow, the farmer shook his head and muttered. You should put yourself in my position. A cow like that, you don't want to eat it all at once. <laughs> Pastor Koju, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, if we will all be honest, that unfortunate cow has so much in common with Nigeria, which has over the years become a victim of serial abuse, including by those to whom she has given so much. As I reflected on that story in the past few days, I came to the conclusion that just like that cow, Nigeria is no more than a meal ticket to many of our elites. What is even more unfortunate is that the people who speak ill of her the most especially in a season like this, are those who have benefited immensely from the opportunities presented to them by this supposedly, supposedly useless country. Let me make a confession here. I owe a lot to Nigeria that someone like me, given my background, could attend a university like Ife, as at the time I did, was because the state made education at that level to be tuition free. And whether they admit it or not, there are hundreds of thousands like me who are where they are today on account of Nigeria. The education they got, the wealth they have accumulated, and the influence they still peddle. Unfortunately, it is from this same collection that you find those who continually trouble our country. On 6th June this year, some old men under the ages of coalition of Arewa youths gave the Igbo people living in the North till yesterday, October 1, to vacate the region. Even though the cute notice was eventually withdrawn, the damage that ultimatum did to our national psyche would take many years to heal. But then, the action of this group was also a response to the uncontrolled verbal aggression by Mr. Nam Dikanu, leader of the so-called indigenous people of Biafra. Egged on by the mob, comprising mostly Okada riders, with online support from his, several of his kinsmen in the diaspora, Kanu was allowed to take this, was allowed to take a speech to an unprecedented level, even by the standards of our country. Even when he, pre he was presented a golden opportunity to champion the genuine grievances of his people with civility, Following his an ill-advised prison trial that put, catapulted him into national limelight, Kanu could not rise beyond the mediocrity of the adulation of some street urchins. He, he felt that by making incendiary statements to offend, insult, intimidate, and threaten people from other ethnic groups, he was happy whatever his cause was. At the end, he made a strategic miscalculation.